Oh, hey. Look at hey, our Day Today Day All Day viewers. We see you. You guys look real good. Thanks for spending Tuesday with us. Thank you, Today All Day Nation. Of course, you're back for another episode of our digital show, Today in 30. We hoped you meant to click. Let's break down what we have for you today. First, President Biden's key speech today at the U.N. It's his first there since he took office, and Savannah had the chance to speak with one of the leaders in the audience, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Yeah, he's making a big push for world leaders to sink a lot of money into the fight against climate change, and that's just one of the topics we yeah. discussed. It was really wide-ranging. It was an exclusive conversation. We'll have that for you coming up. And speaking of the environment, it is the focus of our new series on air and online. It's called Today Climate. And now we'll get things started with an eye-opening ride in a mobile lab that can detect surprising ways that we're all contributing to air pollution. Plus, we got a chance to visit with Amanda Gorman, the young poet. She wowed at the inauguration. She's sharing a powerful new message. It's aimed at kids, a children's book. And it's talking about achieving your dreams. All that. Plus, we're going to show you how to kick up a boxed dessert mix with three hacks that are a piece of cake. Oh. From one of my favorite bakers. It's the milk bar. The, you know, love the milk bar. The milk love bar. Let's get to it. Let's just go straight to the cake. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Chief White House Correspondent and Weekend Today, co-anchor of Peter Alexander's at the U.M. with the latest. Hey, Peter, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning to you. This speech wrapping up only a short time ago, a much more traditional United Nations speech from President Biden, his debut speech before the General Assembly, and focusing heavily on trying to rebuild partnerships, to revitalize alliances, and to restore the U.S.'s position as the global leader. But he is facing a lot of pushback on a series of topics, including the chaotic troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, as well as more more recently, the U.S. excluding France from a submarine deal with Australia. The president addressing some of those criticisms. And as it relates to a U.S. foreign policy overseas, saying the focus would be not on relentless war, but relentless diplomacy. U.S. military power must be our tool of last resort, not our first. And it should not be used as an answer to every problem we see. Bombs and bullets cannot defend against COVID-19. To fight this pandemic, we need a collective act of science and political will. The president's focus was heavily on the coronavirus pandemic and on climate change. On coronavirus, there has been much criticism that the president is pushing to give out third shots or booster shots to many Americans when much of the world has not received it first. It's first, and here's what the president had to say specifically on climate change. Making these ambitious investments isn't just good climate policy. It's a chance for each of our countries to invest in ourselves and our own future. It's an enormous opportunity to create good-paying jobs for workers in each of our countries and to spur long-term economic growth that will improve the quality of life for all of our people. A very stark contrast between President Biden saying that America is back and his predecessor, former President Trump, with his America First policy. The president heads back to Washington today, hosting the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson at the White House. Hoda. Yeah, Peter, and again, speaking of Prime Minister Johnson, head of his U.S. meetings and the visit to the White House, Savannah, you had a chance to sit down with him exclusively. Yeah, we had a conversation yesterday afternoon. He's here hoping to convince top world leaders to hand over big bucks to fight climate change. A big sales pitch there. We talked to him about that and more, everything from global global affairs, Afghanistan, to fatherhood. But we began with his take on the situation in Afghanistan and the recent U.S. withdrawal. How frustrating has that been for you, this withdrawal of Afghanistan that was so chaotic? My country, the, the U.K., owes a big debt to the U.S. military for the incredible professionalism and sacrifice they showed at, at that airport, at the Hami Karzai International Airport. It was an amazing operation. It's never going to be an easy thing to do to pull out of uh, somewhere like Afghanistan after 20 years in a clean uh, and straightforward way. But you can't spend your whole time yeah. trying to run another country by proxy. It, and it, that was, it, an, it was never going to be easy, but it didn't have to be that messy. Your own diplomats were stranded in Kabul. We have that mistaken drone strike. Are you frustrated that the U.S. withdrawal was so botched, frankly? I think that it was a massive logistical success, what they did. We, You're being we had quite a big, easy uh, come, easy go about it, but you, you heard about it in Parliament, members of your own party. Uh, uh, Tony Blair called it tragic and unnecessary. Theresa May, member of the Conservative Party, went after you. Should the U.S. have been surprised by how quickly this collapse of Afghanistan happened? What did the intelligence tell you? It, it, there was a spectrum of advice, a spectrum of predictions from the intelligence people, amongst which 
was the possibility that Kabul would collapse very fast and that the Taliban would, uh, would take over very fast. Of course, uh, you, you're going to look back on it with mixed feelings. But I'll I, I say this, Savannah, all the things we did in, in Afghanistan, 3.6 million uh, women and girls were educated who would not otherwise Well, what about those women education. and girls now? Sure. Uh, and we've, well, I, I agree. It's a terrible thing now to listen to some of the threats that we're hearing uh, to their potential, their, their freedom, their opportunities. But what we've got to do is work together as the, as the West to say to the new authorities in, uh, in Afghanistan, in, in Kabul, look, you, you want our cash? Uh, we want to engage with you, but you know, Afghanistan can't be a breeding ground for terror anymore. There were reports that as this collapse was happening, you tried to reach President Biden and didn't receive a call back for some 36 hours. Is that true? Don't discuss my calls with other leaders, but the best of my recollection, we talked very frankly about the whole thing. And so you didn't feel snubbed or not sufficiently consulted as this was happening? No, not at all. No, no, no. Do you think the president was too stubborn about this total withdrawal by a certain date from Afghanistan? Uh, I, America has been there for, for 20 years, and it's a respectable argument to say that enough is enough. You could, do you agree they, with they the decision? Back it sounds like you feet. do. Look, I mean, could we have done it a bit differently? Maybe we could. I, I did want to ask you about President Trump. You I mean, spoke out pretty forcefully after January 6th and the riots at the U.S. Capitol. Oh, yes. Was that a rift in the relationship between you? I'm a massive fan of American, of American democracy. I think America stands for an ideal. And that ideal is that people should be able to uh, choose their governments peacefully, one person, uh, one vote. Uh, by election, I just felt that the, some of the scenes at the at the Capitol didn't wholly correspond uh, with that. Well, that's that pretty idea. mild that, language. That, that, that ideal. The people were ransacking uh, uh, that, their offices. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm 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 a, I'm a friendly and, and loving observer, and that, so I I just thought. Uh, that's, but do you that's hold what I I former said. President Trump responsible for inciting that riot? Look, I, I have no knowledge of of, of what what happened, but I, what I think is that let me put put it this way: my admiration for American democracy is undimmed. By the whole thing. Did you ever worry in those days after the election, before inauguration, about the stability of the president or what he no. might do? No, no. There are reports that General Milley, who's one of our top generals, mm -hmm. was so concerned about military action the president might take, he actually called his Chinese counterpart. Did you ever worry about anything like that in the I, final I, waning I, days of the Trump administration? I mean, to be frank, I didn't. No, I, th I, I, I thought that, I mean, you know, the, the the polls seem to, 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 you know, oscillate to and fro, but then, you know, the, the, the people made up their mind. People here perceive you as kind of two peas in a pot. It is the job of any Prime Minister of the, of the UK to have a, 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 a good relationship with the, the, the President of the United States. The US-UK relationship, we are doomed, we are fated to get along, and that's quite right. That applies to, to Donald Trump. It applies to Joe Biden, but what I will say about Joe Biden, dealing with, with the, the new American president, yes, it is a breath of fresh air in the sense that there are some things on which we can really, really work together. And you knew I was going to bring it up. Climate change. You know, he's great on that. And he wants to cut CO2. He wants to get to, to net zero by 2050. And he shares with me a basic view that you can do this without penalizing the economy. You have taken a more adversarial approach with China. Just recently, there was an announcement that Australia, the UK, and the US uh, have a deal to put nuclear-powered submarines in the Australian waters. China has told Australia, you should expect the worst. China sees this as incredibly provocative. I think that's ridiculous. And there's no need whatever for anybody to construe this as adversarial towards them. Going this back a, to This is about technology transfer. Let's talk about COVID. You have 81% of your eligible citizens vaccinated right now. We're at 64%. The president has turned to mandates where it, he has the legal authority to do so. Do you think that's the right it's idea? It's different strokes for different folks, okay? It's up to different countries to decide how they want to approach this. This is very controversial area. People feel very strongly about uh, not having the state mandate something. In my country, we're great lovers of liberty. We've had to do it by sweet reason and persuasion, and that's working. What do you do when sweet reason and persuasion don't work? Keep going. Sweet, more sweet reason.
since you became prime minister, you became a father again, you have a new yes, baby, I you're do, expecting yeah. another baby. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's you nice. have six kids. Yes. What's it like so, to have little babies in, in it's Downing Street? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's you know, well, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. I'll tell you that much. But it's it's I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, I, I want you. I change a lot of nappies in case anybody. Do you really? I do. I do. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. I, it all, we're, we're having the wave. We have all the feels. Who could forget those words? That's, of course, Amanda Gorman. She captivated the world back in January. She became the youngest inaugural poet ever. Well, since then, she's become the first poem, poet to perform at the Super Bowl. She co-chaired the Met Gala, look at you, and she was a, named a number one New York Times best-selling author. I haven't even said half the things you've done. No, I know. And now, by the way, she's out with her debut a book. It's a picture book. It's called Change Sings. We are delighted to have Amanda with us. Hi. Amanda, there's so much to discuss. This book is absolutely beautiful, but boy, have you been on a whirlwind. I mean, you kind of captivated the nation back in January. Just how has this ride been for you up to well, this point? Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here today. And I've just been riding the roller coaster, <laughs> enjoying it. You know, it hasn't even been a year yet, and I'm looking back in my life has changed. So I'm just so grateful for all of it. It's incredible, actually. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, was that just nine months? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so much has happened. Sharing the Met Gala, you're a Harvard grad. You've, uh, you were the cover of Vogue. Actually, yeah, we have yeah. a really cute thing. Yeah. We should just roll it with your mom <laughs> seeing your cover for the first time. Oh, yeah. Show that. It's so cute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, well, that's not it. Sorry, we'll wrong thing. We'll they weren't it. ready for that. We'll show up. But anyway, I, I mean, I, yeah. just like, how do you even, how do you even yeah. handle such a whirlwind and such mm. an overwhelming mm. amount of attention and success mm. that fast? Mm. I'm very fortunate. I have family and friends who keep me grounded and remind me of who I am. And what often I think about is writing for me is always home. So it doesn't matter if I go to the moon and back. Whenever I pick up a pen, I'm where I belong, where I need to be, and that helps keep me planted firmly on the ground. For those who don't know your backstory, I mean, you had to overcome a speech impediment. Yes. I mean, you had poetry in your heart and soul forever. But speaking the words was a big deal and was mm. a difficult thing to overcome. So I just thought about you because I was Googling you right before you went on and I thought, look at her standing there in front of the world, really, mm. and saying those words. How did you overcome mm. that? To, to be able to perform that way? Well, honestly, it took years and years of practice, speech therapy to overcome my speech impediment. I mean, I remember being 20 years old, so this is like three years ago, and still not even being able to really fully say my last name. And so I had to put in the work, the labor. I listened to Hamilton a lot and tried to <laughs> rap with the actors. And over time, that not only kind of engaged my love for poetry, but engaged my love for my own voice to the point wow. that I could have a stage and could hear it with love. Love and acceptance. I also love about you, Amanda, that you know that you want to run for president one day. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know the year it's going to happen when you become eligible. What is it? 20, 2036. 30, yes. Yeah, <laughs> just checking. You knew. Um, and you know that it's, for some people, you go, oh my gosh, she already has those political mm. ambitions. Why do you, where did that dream come from? Yeah. Mm. And why do you want to be president? That's a great question. I mean, I remember being around 11 years old and I was in class talking very passionately, as I do, about things. I wanted to change in the world, and my teacher said to me, quite jokingly, ha, 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 you should run for president. And I said, yes, yes. I should. <laughs> and so it became this ambition where, for me, it means that the hopes that I have for making the world a better place, I have to think more expansively beyond poetry. It's not just writing. It's doing right as well. And if I can do that while changing political institutions, changing the quality of life in my own home country, I think that's a great extension of poetry. You're, you're doing it right now. Uh, this book, Change Things, is, by the way, the Rose is beautiful. The pictures are amazing. Um, what do you hope people take away from this? Mm. 
Uh, it means so much yeah. to see. This has been like four years in the making, so it means so much. For me, I wanted to write a children's book in which young readers can see themselves as real agents of change within the world. I was speaking with so many family members and guardians who asked me, how do I talk about the world with my child? And I said, first and foremost, by highlighting how important they are to our future. And that's really the core of the message of Change Things. Well, it's just so beautiful. And you wrote this well before the inauguration, oh, yes. well before you were a household name, oh. well before you were on the cover of Vogue. <laughs> Wait, I do think we have the video now. Let's just see your mama, because she's so proud of you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Amanda, absolutely gorgeous. That's my daughter. <laughs> yes, it is. I love that. Amanda, thank you. you make everybody wow. proud. Thank you so much. The book is called Change Sings, and it's out right now. Pick it up. Our girls love it. So you're still too. This morning, we're launching our new Today Climate Initiative. We're going to bring you in-depth stories about the challenges we face and the strategies to help solve this crisis, beginning with an eye-opening look at air pollution and how we're all contributing without even realizing it. I went for a ride in one super cool van to check it out. So this is your A-team van. That's right. This is where you get stuff done. This is it. We call this the mobile laboratory. Uh -huh. Essentially, this is a laboratory that allows us to go out and measure air pollution in real time. This state-of-the-art mobile project is led by University of Colorado air researcher Matt Coggin. We're sampling basically anything that could be in urban air, personal care products, cleaning products, paints, basically anything that comes from human sources. So this system here, as we're driving about, we can pull a sample and it fills a can. And then that can, we ship off to Boulder, Colorado, and we analyze that. For the last three years, Matt's teamed up with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, and Caltech scientists to help identify air pollutants caused by everyday household products and even people. What I'm surprised about that we give off these things that affect air pollution. If you look at the label of your of your products, mm -hmm. right, you can see all the different molecules in there. And those molecules are designed to evaporate. When we're applying a fragrance or we're applying a personal care product, we want to smell good. Mm -hmm. And if you can smell something, it means it's in the air. So are you telling me when I'm putting on deodorant, I'm giving off compounds? You are, yeah, exactly. The project started in New York City and has now gone national currently in Los Angeles. Okay. Today, we're collecting scientific data. Our first stop, Hollywood. All right, let's go hunting. Right now, we're measuring the breadth of the city. So we're kind of getting the whole background <laughs> of what Los Angeles looks like. You see anything from these guys? <laughs> yeah. They really are awesome. Capturing some personal plumes. Wow, what a spike right there. Yeah. <laughs> Filling a canister. In the business, we call that slamming a can. Slam the can, baby. Slam the can. I'm slamming the can. <laughs> the amount of pollutants coming from our daily activities is now as equivalent as what's coming out of our tailpipes. What? The success of the Clean Air Act brought that source down to a level where most cars aren't all that polluting. Emissions captured include the main ingredients for smog, which can trigger health issues in children, the elderly, and people with lung disease, including asthma. Leanne Randolph is chair of the California Air Resources Board. Our focus is the regulatory perspective. It's the getting the manufacturers to make them better rather than telling consumers not to use the products. Her group uses this type of data in a continuing effort to clean up air quality in the state. The board recently putting new regulations on four categories of products. Air fresheners, hair care products, personal fragrances, and bug sprays. I'm in, a, in my grocery store, my supermarket, and I'm trying to make choices. What am I looking for in the label? Think about natural products. So using something that is not based off petroleum, but something that comes from, say, plant-based. A plant-based. We decided to head to an iconic fast food place, and that's when levels went off the chart. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. 
Cooking emissions, all right. Oh my God. Great. Wow. Oh, you can really smell Look it. at this, I mean. Oh yeah, oh, that's intense. When we pull these samples out to start analyzing them back at home, uh -huh. we'll be able to tell, okay, how much of this was cooking emissions, how much came from the people sitting around. This is new to us, this is new science, this is fun. Good morning, today in 30, it's Christina here. Look, I wrote a kid's book. Check out Hoda and Jenna to hear all about it. All right, let's face it. A lot of us do not have the time or the know-how to bake cakes from scratch. So if you prefer cake mix straight from the box, we're gonna show you how to kick those creations up a notch and be the star of your next bake okay, sale. Okay, here's the secret. The secret is to let your imagination run wild oh. with the frosting. So says Christina Tosi. She's the owner of Milk Bar here in New York City. She's got a new children's book. Listen to this. It's called oh. Every Cake Has a Story. I feel like if Kathy Christina, Lee was here, she would say, Every, Every cake has, has a story. Hi, Christina. Hi. <laughs> Christina's like, what's happening? How are you? Congrats Hi, on the new too. book. How are you? Yeah, tell us oh, about it. Thank you so much. I mean, Every Cake. So every cake has a story. Um, the protagonist's name is Sammy. She's this little girl that lives in a town where everything looks the same and everything tastes the same and everyone makes the same cake. And you all know me well enough to know I am all about possibility and creativity and individuality. And I just felt like there needed to be a book out there that told the value of those traits through the lens of this little girl named Sammy, and of course, through a layer cake, the possibility of cake. Yes. You know that's what I'm here for. Christina, you just had a babe too, and that yeah. babe, that Frankie, Frankie, is gonna be the luckiest mom, uh, luckiest oh, girl in at, the world. Wait, look at Frankie. Oof! I bet you can't wait to bake with her. She is a little marshmallow, I'm <laughs> telling you. She loves cake, she loves frosting. She definitely, like, her, you know, like half of her body is made up of cake because I eat so much cake because I'm always thinking about what could be frostings and fillings and crumbs yes. and crunches, but more importantly, frostings because okay. that for me is like where the individuality and personality really takes place well, in how cake. Do, how, how would you jazz that cool? up? Yeah, we, yeah. Want, we want something. I love the can Straight kind. from Don't the box, but okay. how do we make it cool? I have a few tips. 100%. It's all about making it cool, right? So one of the first things that people don't realize is you can take a standard vanilla frosting, cut up some fresh strawberries, right? Haul them, cut them up, throw them into a mixer, paddle it around, and you get this beautiful, chunky frosting. <gasps> it's sweet, it's fresh, it's tart. It can go on a cupcake, it can go on a sheet cake. Now, if you're like less of a strawberry person, but you really like the idea of possibility through frosting, you can take your favorite cookie yes. from the pantry next to your cake mix, yes. put it in a Ziploc oh, bag, baby. take what? your rolling pin, pound it, or it up, like, right? right? A cookie and cream. Yeah. That and fold it into frosting, yeah. right? We look at this, that. cookies and cream, my friends. Oh. Yes. Look at this. Give your frosting a little crumb, a little flavor, a little personality. Everything doesn't have to just be chocolate and Chris, vanilla. So you can use anything. Are you anything? ready for yeah. my favorite frosting use. of the season? Anything. Christina, can I you ask ready you a for question? anything? Yeah, if, we're ready for anything. We're ready for anything. 100%. But if you like whipped cream better than frosting, yes. which I do, can you do that same thing but with oh. the whipped cream? 100% 100 percent, Jonna. Take that whipped cream. Yes. Take your favorite cookie. Ugh. Crush it down, oh Ziploc bag, it's a great activity for kids. Fold it in, I love your idea of whipped cream. Christina, you Are you got ready it. for this? Because this could be a whipped cream move or a frosting move. You've got a bowl what full do you know of about donuts. Apple donuts. 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 What are you gonna do? We just, y'all, you break the donuts down by hand, right? Boom, 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 break it down by hand. Yep. You take that donut crumb, you put it into your frosting. No, y'all, you no, this is the don't. fall move. At Milk Bar, we make donut frosting, my friends. You ready? We make it. Hit it. Hit it. And then, the then we whip it up into donut oh. frosting. We top our oh. latest apple cider donut oh. cake. You can oh. get it at any of our bakeries at milkbarstore.com. Talk about every cake has a story, my friends. It is on this okay, fall, donut frosting. I better see it in your kitchen or on your front doorstep. Okay. You got it. We will. Christina, we, we and these donuts you. are oh. not just your average donut. No. It's one of the best donuts oh, I've wow. ever had. Try these recipes at home. Head to today.com slash food. Please check out Christina's yes. book. It's called Every Cake Has a Story at today.com slash shop. Be sure you join us tomorrow. James Gandolfini's son, Michael, he'll tell us what it was like to step into the role that made his late father a household name. And have you gotten the chance to listen?
to Hoda's new podcast? You need to. Just search for Making Space with Hoda Kotb. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Honestly, it's wherever you get your podcasts. It will be the best 45 minutes you ever spent. That is I mean, so it is nice. so uplifting. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> and then send me a thank you note. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll actually send her one. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.